Well, what we have here is the last in the uh, series of fixing All-American 5 radios. It's another cheater because uh, this one is an All-American 6. It's got an extra uh, RF stage. And moreover, uh, this one also has a shortwave band on it. And so uh, that ought to be interesting. My favorite part about this one was the tag that it had on it when I bought it. It said, this radio works perfect if you love static and popping. So uh, here's the good old non-polarized cord on here. And you already know what we're going to have to end up doing with that. And uh, I think we'll just start off here by doing some removals. And uh, thank goodness nobody glued any of those on and uh, we'll get to see the inside of this thing for the first time together oh there's a piece fell off right there okay so that's just kind of loosely attached we may do something about that in the end so I'm thinking that this plate is probably going to come off here first and then maybe there may be some other screws that hold the chassis in but maybe not. These might be the screws that actually hold the chassis to the uh, to the radio. Uh, but we know that that chassis has to move backwards because the potentiometers and the tuning peg are all sticking out the front of the radio. So there's no way that this thing's coming out the way that it is because it's got to come out the bottom. So. I can kind of feel things resting, so it could very well be that the chassis was attached to this thing. That looks like a, a fancy screw that somebody else put in there. And uh, take a look here. Let's see if I can get this one. Oh yeah, it looks like that whole thing is not only screwed to the radio, but screwed to the top. It's just going to kind of fall out of here, I think. We'll see how that all goes. There's the last, the last of them. Now, let's see if we get this thing to move down a little bit and move out. Boy, that's a rough go right there. Oh, well, that's nice. The speaker seems to be in good shape. Well, there's the inside of it. Let's take a look at the rest of it here. Yeah, a little bit dirty on the inside, but there's no hornet's nests, which is kind of nice. And it looks like all of the tubes are present on here, too. I believe that this one has a 35Z5 for the rectifier. I've got a 35L6 for the output tube. And it's got lots of nice metal tubes in here. 12SA7, 12SQ7, 12SK7. This is really, uh, that really is an All-American 5 kind of lineup. Then with the antenna, both shortwave and AM here on the back. And a little wire that sticks out here in case you want to hook up an external antenna. So this one's a little bit more complicated than uh, the other ones. We're going to want to get in the bottom of this chassis. So now... Looking at this thing the way that it is, what I recognize is that uh, these screws are going to have to come out of the bottom of this to get this metal plate off. So there's that part of it as well. And I really don't want to lay this down on that antenna. So I'm going to use this to kind of prop it up in the back so that I can get those extra screws out. And those screws appear to be the ones that are on the 
feet of the uh, thing. So we'll get the footsies off. Now there's another one. Got to kind of be a little bit careful here because I'm sure that this thing's going to want to fall down. Yeah, just like that. It doesn't have very far to go. Yeah, I isn't going to cut it. Okay. That way we can get into the bottom of it. And let's just take a little examination of what's here in the bottom. If we can take a look at it while it's on its side, maybe we can prop it up with something here a little bit, or we'll see. And eh, not much. Let's try it this way. That's better. Okay. Well, we can see that we've got lots of wax capacitors in here. And including the uh, including the uh, electrolytic, the filter. So, got a wax capacitor here, here, here. Another one here, 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 here. Oh no, that one isn't. That one's mica. Back in here. Then we've got this big electrolytic, and there's one tucked in back there. So it looks like we have our work cut out for us because. You probably know from some of my previous videos that the wax capacitors cannot stay in here and neither can the electrolytic so we'll take a look through this thing first and we'll take a look at the IF transformers and the output transformer and make sure that we aren't going to have a catastrophe down the road where one of those transformers is already destroyed and we get all the way done doing all of this work on it then find out that uh, this radio uh, has a problem in it that can't be overcome. So we'll come back and take a look at those. So in the process of uh, determining a plan forward for this RCA uh, 66X1, one of the things we're going to do is first of all make sure that it's worth it to repair it. We're going to do that by checking the coils in the uh, in the radio, and also the uh, primary of the output transformer. So there's an antenna coil here. One of the nice things about RCA is, on their schematic, they put the DC resistance of each of the coils. For instance, this one is 0.2 ohms. This one is 2 ohms. This one is 1.8 ohms. Um, so you can go through with your voltmeter very easily and test these coils. So we'll test the antenna coil. Um, we'll test the wave trap and the peaking coil. Then we'll test the coils on the IF transformers. We'll also test the coils on the oscillator. Um, oscillators, I should say, down here. Then we'll test this IF transformer. Then we'll come over and test the primary of the uh, of the output transformer. So that's how we'll make sure that we aren't starting on a journey that we can't finish because they're unobtainable parts, unless of course you want to wind your own coils. A nice thing about RCA is they even showed the coils and uh, where to go on the terminals on them to test them. So. Uh, that's just fantastic. Very easy to do. I will tell you that I've already tested these coils and I've also tested the the primary of the output transformer and it, it all looks good. So we're going to move forward with this and we're going to develop a plan on uh, what we're going to have to replace in here to uh, do a rebuild on this radio. All of the wax capacitors have gone bad. The electric electrolytic capacitors um, are also bad so what we're going to do is we're going to come through 
we're going to replace any of the capacitors that are not mica and uh, that'll be like this 0.05 microfarad right here the 0.1 microfarad right here 0.1 microfarad right here um, over here this 0.005 the 0.02 um, the 0.02 up here the 50 microfarad electrolytic and the 30 microfarad electrolytic and we'll replace this 0.05 as well and so uh that's what, how we're going to do this we're going to put together that plan and make sure that we have those capacitors and go in and replace all the wax capacitors and the electrolytic capacitors then of course we're going to work on the power supply over here because this is an all-american five type of radio we will take this switch right here and we will relocate it to over here we will put a polarized plug on this, wire this straight through, put the neutral on this line, and put the hot before the power switch that we put over here. So we'll move this power switch over to here. That way, uh, we can't get shocked on the chassis. So that's the plan forward for this uh, radio. I've checked the tubes and they all seem to be fairly uh, acceptable. I've also, checked all of the resistors and there's one resistor in there that we may have to replace i believe it's a uh, 220k well we'll take a look at that it's gone quite a bit high so that's all for now then we'll get down to doing some replacements on the capacitors so with the capacitor replacement here we'll start right at the top with this uh, 0.01 we'll do this one down here this is going to be a 0.05 this one's going to be a 0.1 and here I've got the three capacitors over here you'll notice that the ends of them are marked with black for the shielded side of the capacitor uh, this has the black line here the black line is here and the black line is here so we'll keep those uh, keep those shields on the low impedance part of the circuit and we'll replace those and come back after that and take a look. Well here we've gotten a little ways into it. This one replaced, that one, that one, that one, this one. We've got about uh, five more to go here. These three waxies and then the electrolytic and then we should be uh, good to go except for possibly this 220k resistor I'm gonna reanalyze that and how it's used in the circuit and decide whether we need to replace that or not so we've uh, done our capacitor replacements here replace this one this one this one this one back in here these five right here this one all the way down under here then the two electrolytics put a little bit of extra uh, uh, adhesive in there to hold those so that they're real solid and uh, one of the last things I'm going to do here is this thing had an RCA jack and that RCA jack has some tabs on the back of it they look like this and they're just basically an accident uh, waiting to happen and I'm not going to be plugging a phonograph into this anyway. So instead of worrying about whether that switch is going to make contact or not, I believe I'll take this wire right here and put it directly to where this green one comes back. I'll cut that a little bit shorter and put that on here. And that way we'll cut down on extra noise and uh, alleviate the problem of the audio signal not being able to make it through that jack so uh, that's what's going to be next okay so we've got all the capacitors that we need replaced the new power cord has been wired in with the hot going to the on off switch and the neutral going basically to the ground of the system and also this wire that used to go out to this RCA jack has been wired straight from the IF coil to the top of the volume control 
And uh, as for all of the dead soldiers over here, there are quite a few. And here's an example of one of the reasons why you replace these uh, capacitors. I'll show you over here on the capacitor checker what this capacitor looks like. Remember that what we're looking for here is for the eye on this capacitor checker to open up at each time we increase the voltage all the way up to 600 volts. You have to be careful with this machine. Here as we start going up, you'll notice that the eye, there you go, the eye stays closed and we aren't anywhere near 600 volts. So that's the reason why you replace those old paper wax type capacitors. They just all have to be replaced and uh, that's what we've done. So this radio is just about ready for a test. After that. So one of the unfortunate things about this uh, RCA is that to align it, you need to be able to, uh, for the AM section, be able to set the dial directly to 600 and then also to be able to set it to 1300 uh, kilocycles and then uh, be able to set it to uh, 9.5 megahertz for the short wave and 10.8 megahertz for the uh, short wave. So there are no marks on the dial uh, backing. So unfortunately, I had to put the whole radio back in the case and then make my own marks with a Sharpie here uh, where I can stop that dial and do the alignment while the radio is out of the case. So uh, that's just one of those things. They never use, a lot of times guys will put um, little nicks uh, companies would put little nicks in the dials so that you could tell where the frequencies were but in this case uh, they did not do that so I had to put it back in the case and then uh, then make the marks myself now we'll take it back out and align it you can't align it while it's in the case at all okay we're getting ready for the alignment and uh, the way that this is going to work is we're going to feed in a 455 kilohertz signal into pin 8 of the uh, 12 SA7. And uh, that, uh, that feed in is not going to be directly connected to the pin. It's connected uh, to the insulation on the line leading to that pin so as to knock the signal down a little bit more um, and then we're going to take a reading off of the AGC line and we're going to monitor it on this uh, Hewlett Packard 410B uh, you'll notice that it's set to negative here that's going to be a negative voltage and what we're going to do is we're going to try and maximize that negative voltage by tuning the two IF stages now I cannot tune every IF uh, slug on this radio because these bottom IF slugs uh, here and here, the manufacturer has poured epoxy into them and I can't get them loose, but we will tune the top of them and it's safe to assume that they haven't moved because believe me, I can't turn them and uh, I don't imagine that anybody else was able to turn them with that epoxy on them. But we'll turn the top two slugs and we'll try and maximize the AGC voltage and uh, therefore uh, having the IF section uh, putting through the uh, maximum signal. So here we go. Um, this is 455 kilohertz signal fed in with a uh, 400 hertz uh, signal modulated at uh, 50 percent so uh we'll go at it here and we'll watch the meter and we'll try and peak these two if coils i think these were the only two that they were able to screw uh, screwdriver uh, you see it went up there and then it starts going down again and so what we want is we want it as far up as it'll go
There we go. Then we'll move on to the second IF coil. Once I can get my screwdriver onto it. Oh, there we're getting some good stuff. Oh, it's going back down. Up and down. There we go. We want that just as high as it'll go. There we go. That's yeah, looking pretty darn good. We'll take one more run through them. There we go. Go back to this one. Devil getting on there. There we go. There we go. Now you might wonder why I use the AGC line. I don't have a fancy signal generator that goes all the way down to one microvolt, you know, so uh, uh, my signal generator is a bit stronger than that, and I haven't built an attenuator for it, so I'd just as soon use the AGC line as use the speaker, but uh, one of these days I'll build an attenuator for it, and then we'll use the speaker and set it on AC. So that will conclude the IF alignment, and uh, we'll move on next to doing some uh, RF alignment work on it. Now this part's going to get a little bit laborious, but what I've done is i put marks on the front of this dial. This first mark right here is 600 kilohertz, and this mark over here is 1,300 kilohertz. Uh, these two marks here are for short wave. This one's 9.5 megahertz. This one's 11.8 uh, uh, megahertz. So what I'll do is I'll bring that dial right up to that line. And that corresponds to where this sits on the, uh, on the dial scale that's in the case of the radio. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this so that that is indeed 600 kilohertz and that this one over here is 1.3 uh, megahertz or 1,300 kilohertz. And how we're going to do that is we're going to adjust some of these items here. So for the 1,300 kilohertz, that is this capacitor here will adjust. For the 600 uh, kilohertz, we'll adjust this in the slug on this inductor right here. And we have to go back and forth because each time I adjust one of them, the other one's going to move. We're going to go back and forth until we get them both aligned. And then we're going to set it at 1,300 kilohertz. And we're going to adjust the antenna so that uh, it has the best, uh, best reception. So... That's how this alignment is going to go, just so that you know. Um, probably what you're going to see is, is me turning screws and listening to it. So uh, that's, uh, that's how that'll go. Okay. So this dial is set to 1,300 kilohertz. And so is the frequency generator, and it's hooked up to the antenna. But you'll notice that you don't hear any tone. As we start moving this, that's where the tone actually is. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust that capacitor on the side until we get that tone to move where we want it to. And so I've got a screwdriver on it. Uh-oh. my and it appears that that's as far as I can go so I'm gonna try adjusting the other end at the 600 
It might be that if I adjust the antenna, I might be able to get a little bit more out of it too. That's a disturbing development. still a little ways away so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna adjust the other end and see if that moves it well on the 1300 end that's about as close as we're gonna get it um, I tried everything including uh, maneuvering the potato slicer a little bit anybody who doesn't know what that means uh, I'll take a little second in the next uh, segment to show you I moved it as much as I could without uh, shorting it out, but uh, you can only move that so far, and I did get closer, but uh, that's about as close as it gets. Now down at 600. Let's go on down to 600. It's nice and sensitive. It's wanting to pick up all kinds of stuff in the basement. Because... There we go. So 600 is dead on. You take a look at where the mark is for 600. As we come up to it, we're right dead on there. So, but a little bit low up up here, and that's okay. These dials weren't that uh, that terribly accurate to start with, but uh, at the same time, I wish I could have gotten a little bit closer on that one. So, now we'll uh, we'll move on. I think it's going to work fine. It's it, it isn't bothering me at all. Uh, we're going to repaint this back here. I, I'd like to see that a real pretty gold. We're going to go on to the uh, shortwave band and we're going to align the shortwave band next. Let's take a quick look at the potato slicer. Here's the potato slicer. It's an air gap capacitor. One of the things you'll notice on this air gap capacitor, they have plates here that have serrations in them. And what you can do is you can bend those in or bend them out only a little bit. You really can't move them much. They're on both sides. On this side, they're serrated, and on this side, they're serrated. What I tried to do is I tried to bend them in a tiny bit to get that dial closer uh, to 1300 kilohertz. Um, I wasn't altogether successful, but I did get it closer than it was before by bending just the very last, the very last one of these. I bent it as far as I could without uh, shorting out the capacitor, but uh, I was not altogether successful, but uh, did get a little bit out of it. I uh, got, a, got to move the frequency a little bit closer. So there's that, the potato slicer. Okay, we've got the signal generator set for 9.5 megahertz. It's uh, got a tone on it and uh, it's uh, not even coupled to the antenna, it's just running in the back there. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust C20, which is right here in the front, to try and get that. So There's the tone. We want this to be up here when it's reading that tone. So let's adjust as we go along.
very good. That's right where we want it. Now we're going to move on up to the 11.8 11, uh, 11 megahertz range. And that should be this mark up here. And uh, for the 11.8 megahertz one, we have to adjust uh, the L10, uh, L10 oscillator coil. And that is on the back of the radio, so you won't be able to see me adjusting it. But you should be able to see me home in on it. So let's see how we can do here. Let's see where L10 is again. That's right behind the speaker there. Okay. Let's roll this on up. And we'll change our oscillator to 11. 0.8 megahertz, add some modulation, put a tone on it, and we'll keep on rolling up the dial here till we find it. Oh boy, that's quite a ways off. There's two of those tones on here. Let's get closer. Oh, there it is. Boy, it's about spot on. I'll be darned. Excellent. Well, no adjustment required on that one. So, there we've got the shortwave band taken care of here. Let's go back down and check 9.5 uh, megahertz again and see how close we are on that one. Well, that's about spot on. I don't think I can do much better than that. So that'll take care of the uh, alignment for those. Uh, the only thing is, I would like to uh, turn that down so that I don't drive you out of your mind. I think I'd like to do an RF alignment here. Yeah, we've got an RF alignment at 9.5. So, let's take a look at that. That's a capacitor on the side of the radio. So, let me give that one a try. And see if we can get more out of it. Not easy to get on this one. Oh, yeah. Yep, got a little bit more out of it there. Excellent. Okay, so that'll take care of the alignment of the radio. Now I've just got to paint this uh, faceplate back here and then we'll put it back in the case. In the meantime, let's see how well it picks up down in the basement where I've got all of these terrible things like uh, internet, an internet modem and all of that garbage. But. The real deal. So we take a lot of pride in what we do here on the radio show and what we say, what we rep Is in a place now where he is kind of in a place where LeBron is used to being? Where the hell? going on here yeah and so we never had that we didn't have that after world war ii so no. that's we, we never had nothing that. but the so internal oh, no, antenna on this radio i have oh, no oh, antenna oh, yeah. running into this basement of course, so uh, this actually picking yeah, up quite well i'm i'm overjoyed that'll work fine and uh we'll take a look at it once we get it back in the case 
Okay, so we've got the front of this uh, repainted gold, and I, I'm kind of pleased with the way that that worked out. And uh, put a little bit of graphite lubrication on this uh, this uh, uh, needle so that it would move easier. And um, so I think the next thing is we're going to put it back in the case and uh, give it a try. Okay, let's take a run through the AM dial here. Uh, we aren't going to get any short wave right now. Got the... Jack Robbins, who's excited about tomorrow? Who's afraid of a big letdown? I'm afraid of a big, huge letdown. Partnered with us financially. We... 36 months on approved credit. Shop Mazda of Everett and find out why Mazda of Everett... The Dan Bongino Show. Give it I in it. And listeners depend on AM radio each month. AM radio is also the backbone of the emergency alert system. We back up through that stretch, and it looks like we're starting to thicken up a little bit more into. Oh, wait. I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my shorts. What do you see the future? You know, it's, it's kind of a, a mix. <laughs> Partners say that once, <clears throat> and there is a, a very important verse in the book. Right, here's the high setting. They listen because this is the only avenue in which we could get out there because when you send emails to the administration. Oh, so it worked out uh, real nice and uh, we've checked it for isolation. It doesn't have any uh, any voltage on the chassis, whether it's turned on or whether it's turned off. So the rewiring of the power supply worked and... Uh, this is the RCA Victor 6X, uh, 6, 66X1, and uh, it, uh, it turned out pretty nice, and I'm pleased with it. This will be the last one in the uh, All-American 5 series, even though this is an All-American 6. has the extra RF tube, which the farmers liked because they're a little bit further out of town. And last night I was listening to one of my favorite stations that's... Uh, 20 miles away and uh, cuts down to 10,000 watts at night. I put a little loop antenna behind it and it, it picked it up great. So I'm real pleased with it and uh, that'll be the end of this series.